Welcome to Barcelona and the Smart City Expo 2019. Today it's all about the city of tomorrow and what this means regarding to mobility, let's find out now. The urban mobility of the future will uh, be basically electric and uh, with much more micro-mobility vehicles on the street. Well, the big challenges for SEAT will be first to bring these products on the street so we, uh, we don't have actually the know-how to develop by our own. So, And this is why we are doing this collaboration with partners. But uh, the challenge will be to bring them on the street and then to commercialize them. So also our dealer network is not used now to sell these micro-mobility cars and we have to convince them to bring this into this new mobility way. Well, for the moment, uh, the mix between sharing or private is uh, much higher than in private rather than sharing. But in the future, of course, then people will be more, much more used to share rather than to buy. And this is the reason why in the future the mix could change. When we talk about smart cities, we of course talk about electric mobility and this is not only something for private users, it's also something for commercial vehicles like this waste collector here. That car can pick up to 20 cubic meters of waste and it's fully electric. And the noise you hear is not from that truck. So when we talk about smart cities, we of course have to talk about smart parking because maybe you know this, you can spend hours and hours to find a free parking spot. And this is the reason why I'm here at Easy Park and I talked to Maurus Hefflinger. Uh, Maurus, I have a question. Uh, what is Easy Park exactly? Easy Park, we're a mobile parking payment provider. So we're facilitating parking payment through an app in 1,500 cities across Europe. Uh, but the question is, is it only paying easy or is it a bit more? Paying easy is the core, That's uh, we live up to our brand, to our name, uh, but of course that's much more. So we have built additional services on top of that, which allow the car driver to find parking, to manage parking, and this is really kind of the taking the pain out of parking principle, which we basically live up to. When we talk about the app, this is the core business, I think, but is there any partnership with any car manufacturers or is something coming up? Yeah, there's, there's already existing uh, integrations to, for example, Volvo, where we are in the head unit since four years. But there's different um, OEMs for sure uh, in the pipeline for similar integrations, yes. When we talk about big cities like New York, Peking, Shanghai or London, we're not only talking about transportation of people inside of the city, we're also talking about how people will get in and out of the city. And this is the reason why at this Smart City Congress you do find um, production companies of big trains as well. So now I'm here at the ESA booth at the Smart City Expo and my question is simple, what does the space and this concept here brings together. And with me is Bernhard Hufenbach from the ESA. Um, so far, I have a question. Why is the ESA here on a, on a booth or on, a, on, a, on an expo where we talk about smart cities? The space has a fantastic downstream dimension. We have application program like Earth observation, telecommunication, navigation. All these services offer application for future smart city uh, uh, solutions. And so we are trying to understand how we can provide better services for new customers. And smart city is one of our future application fields. When we talk about the future and the ESA, uh, is it possible to talk about being somewhere different than on Earth? Of course, already today on the International Space Station we have since 10 years permanent presence of astronauts doing fantastic science for society. The next destination will be Moon. Uh, we are working with international partners to return humans back to the Moon by 2428. And the idea is to be smart on the Moon. That means if we want to be on the Moon, we want to be sustainable. That means we need to integrate new technologies like on a smart city also in the future Moon operations. So as you see, the future is now and I think it's Barcelona, maybe tomorrow it's the moon. These are these typical micro cars, fully electric and perfect for the city. But to be really honest, if I sh should choose, I would prefer a Seat Mi electric because I will fit in that one easier than in this one. So next to me now is Jason Losty, marketing manager of Seat. And 
Jason, I have a question. When we talk about Seat as a Auto mo a motor company, uh, a car manufacturer, and we talk about the future of Seat, we talk about urban mobility, what kind of products will you provide your clients? Well, we'll continue to offer great cars, as we have done uh, in the past. But uh, in addition to that, we will be presenting a whole range of micro-mobility products. And just like we presented today here at the Smart City Congress, uh, we've got the e-scooter concept, our first electric motorbike or motorcycle. Uh, we've got the e-kick scooter, yeah, which is a, a kick scooter that is electrically powered. And I'm standing in front of uh, the Seat Minimo concept, which is a completely new concept for urban mobility. So in total, we're going to have a whole electric uh, range of new products that actually help people move better within cities and get the flow back into the cities. When we talk about your target group, I think that'll change a bit now when you say you talk about e-scooters and urban mobility. What is the biggest challenge and what is the new target group all about? Yeah, so you have to be much more, you have to put your mind much more into the view and the perspective of consumers, especially of the people that live in bigger cities and are facing quite big challenges in terms of their personal mobility. I think the good thing at SEAD is that we, on average, have a much younger driver's age uh, than a lot of other companies. Uh, but in addition to that, actually, we want to, we really want to provide people that live in cities new possibilities to actually get that flow back into the cities, to not continuously stand in traffic jams. And I think the palette of new products that we're presenting today, but also the sharing platforms and platforms that we are going to be offering uh, will offer very new solutions for personal, and, uh, mo personal mobility. So this is it, the Seat World Premiere at the Smart City Expo, which is the first Seat e-scooter. Um, it's a concept, but it got quite interesting figures. So the car features an 11 kilowatt uh, engine and it has a maximum range of 115 kilometers and top speed is 100 kilometers per hour. And very interesting is the battery because you can just remove it from the vehicle, you can charge it at home or you can just put a different or new one into it to just change it so very quickly. And on top there is an app connected with your electric motorcycle which not only provides you the opportunity to say where is it actually, it also gives you information about how much capacity the battery still has available. Now at the booth of Silence, and Silence is not only the new partner of Seat when it comes to e-scooter, it's also a company that uh, develops scooters and battery systems. And they do have a quite interesting system because you don't have to charge the battery inside of your scooter. You can just pull it out of the scooter, go to a Silence store and just change it into a new one. And this is something you may find in the future in the whole of Barcelona as well, maybe in the whole of Europe. I think quite a nice idea. And to get a bit more about Silence and the company, let's talk to the CEO now. The scooter is designed for, for acceleration, maximum speed is 100 km h uh, acceleration is 0 to 50 in 3.8 seconds, that is a very, very, very uh, speed uh, vehicle in, in, in the category of motorbike, category of, of like 125. Uh, the, the, we are concentrating in this category, uh, we are not uh, mopeds. Uh, and we concentrate in the category that is biggest category in Europe, in the five top markets. No? We are, will be very, very happy if we can make uh, some type of cooperation with other OEMs for really standardize uh, the battery packs. Okay, the, 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 there is a great opportunity. F first of all, is for us, is a is an exciting moment uh, as a Seat uh, choose us in front of many others. Uh, electric motorbikes and these are for for silence is are recognized uh, as as a making a good good work in the past and hope there is a, a great opportunity I, for for sure when when we are, we are a little company and we say that we can grow very very fast really <laughs> The new smart city should be green as well, and this is why you find charging stations like this in the future, I hope. And it would be better if it's made for taller person, not only for dwarfs. So now I try an e-scooter for the very first time, but safety first, this is why I have to wear a helmet. And fingers crossed, I hope I will survive. These e-scooters are a bit, let's say, wobbly or weak, but to be honest, I drove it for the very first time and I drove one of the first generation. So if you look, for instance, at the newer ones, for instance, the one that Seat now produces in cooperation with Sackway, this one is a lot more, let's say, stable and it got a higher steering. So that makes the whole thing a little bit easier. And I think so this is a completely different game then. <laughs> So 
So now I found a company called AID, which means we talk about autonomous driving and we talk about autonomous driving level four. And next to me is David Hauptmann. David, can you explain to me what does AID mean and what do you do? Well, AID stands for Autonomous Intelligent Driving and we basically built the SDS software stack for autonomous vehicles for the whole Volkswagen group. And when we talk about autonomous driving level four, which means no pedals, no steering, what do you think, when will this be yeah, something we see every day? Well, we think that it's uh, still going to take a couple of years, uh, probably 2025, uh, that, that's the number I can say, although uh, I don't have a glass bowl, so I, I cannot really tell you what the exact date will be. And when we talk about uh, this, this ongoing process, so at some point there will be some people autonomously and some people will be manual drivers, what is the biggest challenge with that? Well, indeed, the biggest challenge is actually that uh, human drivers are somewhat uh, unpredictable or generally all kinds of road uh, users. And uh, if we have 100% uh, autonomy, then potentially we also have zero accidents. Everything what's in between is tricky and we have to build our system so that it anticipates the erratic behavior of humans in the best way uh, to make it also safe, uh, much safer before uh, uh, everything is autonomous. That's it from the Smart City Expo here from Barcelona. And I think it's quite interesting to see how many things you have to think about to make the traffic in the city, so the urban traffic, more easy and more comfortable for the future.